Naming amines is going to be the topic in this first lesson in a whole chapter on amines. And before we get into the IUPAC nomenclature, we're going to first learn how to classify them as either primary, secondary, or tertiary ever so briefly. Uh, but then we will dive into the nomenclature and we'll learn how to name amines as the most important functional group in the molecule. We'll learn how to name simple amines with a common name. We'll learn how to name amines with multiple carbon substituents coming off the nitrogen. Uh, and then finally, we'll learn how to name amines when they are not the most important functional group in the molecule. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. Uh, so if you want to be notified every time I post a new one or when I post my next playlist, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so we're going to start with classifying amines here. And if we take a look first at ammonia, uh, back from Gen Chem here. Nitrogen just bonded to three hydrons, and nitrogen having five valence electrons typically is going to have three bonds to get that filled octet. But as you start sequentially replacing these hydrogens with carbon chains, methyl, ethyl, propyl, whatever, so uh, we say they get more substituted. And when one of those three hydrogens have been replaced by a carbon chain, we call that primary. And here's ethylamine, an example of that. Uh, when two out of the three have been replaced with carbon chains, we call that secondary. And here's pyrrolidine, an example of that. It doesn't have to be cyclic. I just chose a cyclic example. Uh, and then finally, if you replace all three with carbon chains, like here in triethylamine, uh, you get a tertiary amine. One thing you should just note is that notice with the tertiary amine, because you don't have any NH bonds, typically as a pure liquid, not going to be capable of hydrogen bonding, whereas all the rest have at least one NH bond and would be capable of hydrogen bonding. So big, big difference there between the three. Let's dive into the nomenclature. All right, so naming amines here. We'll start with a simple primary amine here. And again, notice that it's primary because the nitrogen is only bonded to a single carbon chain. And uh, for simple amines like this, you can often use a common name where you just name the alkyl group or groups it's attached to. So like this is a propyl group. So this would just be propyl amine. So if we had another propyl group, you might have a propyl propyl amine or just dipropyl amine or something like that. Or if you had a propyl and a methyl, it might be, you know, methyl propyl amine or propyl methyl amine. Uh, usually you go alphabetical order as preference and stuff, but that's for the simple common names, uh, but we want to dive into the systematic IUPAC names from here. And so the way it works, you want to find the longest continuous carbon chain that the amine is attached to and give the amine the lowest possible number that you can. And so in this case, we've got a three carbon chain and the amine's on one of the terminus. So we'll call that number one and number right to left. So and a three carbon chain is propane. And the suffix we use when the amine is the highest prior priority function group is simply amine. And so this is going to be propane. So, but since amine suffix starts with a vowel sound, we're going to drop the E in propane and just say propanamine. Cool. Now we're not done yet because that amine could have been located on carbon one or two. Now it couldn't have been located on carbon three because then we would have just called that one carbon one. So because there's a one propanamine and a two propanamine, you got to give its indication. So here I'm going to put that one at the beginning of the name one propanamine and that's acceptable. So, but you'll also find it uh, as we've seen in other examples here, right before the suffix as well. And so you might also see this listed as propan-1-amine, both acceptable IUPAC names here. So now we're going to go on to naming a more substituted amine here. So notice this is a tertiary amine. That nitrogen is bonded to three different carbon chains. And uh, we'll see something a little bit different here. So when you've got three different carbon chains attached to your nitrogen, you pick the longest one to be the parent chain. And that's this one over here. And uh, in this case, you've got either one, two, three, four carbons long. And in this case, we'll number it right to left though, so that the amine gets the lowest possible number. So one, two, three, and either one of these could be for their equivalent. Uh, and in this case, one thing to note, there's nothing that says that your amine has to always come at position one. My two examples do, but your amine could have been in the middle of the chain. We could have had something, you know, where the amine's in the middle, not on one of the terminus and stuff like that. So nothing says it has to be at position one, just the two examples I chose here were the case. Uh, in this case, if we're looking at the parent chain, then it's butane with the amine suffix, so butanamine. And I've got to indicate that it's position one, so we could say one butanamine or butan one amine. That's our parent chain. But then we've also got some substituents here. So, and in this case, we've got three methyl groups. So we're going to say trimethyl, and this one's obviously located at chain locator three here, so three methyl, but these aren't located on a carbon at all, so we can't give a carbon number. They're located on the nitrogen, and just like we saw with amides, uh, they're going to be listed with a chain locator of capital N. And so when you've got some mixture here with N's and 3's, it's customary to put the N's first. Get him out of the way. And so in this case, our substituents are going to be named as N comma N comma 3 trimethyl. 
So, and then once again, it's butanwanamine or 1-butanamine. So, butan one amine, one acceptable way, or again, we could have said n comma n comma three. Trimethyl one butanamine. Cool, either one acceptable with IUPAC. Okay, last example here is where the amine is not the highest priority function. We've got it with a carboxylic acid, which is top dog, so it's definitely higher priority than the amine. And so in this case, we're gonna name the amine as a substituent, and you're just gonna name it as an amino substituent. Technically, this is an amino acid. So not one of your standard amino acids, but it is an amino acid. Uh, actually, it is one of your standard amino acids, I lied. So, but regardless, this, uh, we'll name this uh, amine substituent here. Uh, at the front of the name, with a prefix, if you will, not with the suffix as it, if it were the highest uh, priority uh, function group in the molecule. So here with our carboxylic acid, he's the highest priority. We'll number our three carbon chain here, starting from left to right as a result. So that's going to be propanoic acid as the parent chain. Uh, but the amino group named as a prefix as a substituent beforehand, so we'll say three amino. So, and then propanoic acid. Cool, there is your IUPAC name and there is naming amines. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with the lesson, if you are looking for practice in naming amines, if you're looking for final exam rapid reviews for organic chemistry, check out my premium course at chadsprep.com.